the beach. I'm Ron. And I'm Kyle. And, and this, this is, is The Watch. Watch. Thanks for tuning in to our very first episode ever. We're, uh, we're happy to finally be here to be bringing you all the nerdy and geeky news. Uh, and joining us for our first episode, our special correspondent tonight is Katya. Say hi. Hey, how's it going? My name is Katya, or Kat. I also go by Kappa K. And I'm a cosplayer. And she's dressed as Noctis, if you can't tell. Yeah, if you can't tell. Yeah, she's yeah. just an octus. Like, we got, we got, you know, so it's not just Tuesday attire, or Thursday, I guess. Well, yeah. technically, I Internet would wear details. this every day if I was being completely honest. Anyways, today on the show... Well, first, let's tell them a little bit about why we're here and what we're going to be doing on The Watch. Yeah, today on the show, we're talking about basically why we're here. Oh, okay. Because this is the beginning of the show. We've got, That's we got to right. tell them why we're here. That's why episode one, that's why it's called that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> expecting, you know, the Star Wars... Okay, so okay. anyways. Less, less talking. No more. scroll. Yeah, no scroll. But we are here to watch everything nerdy so that you don't have to. That's the basic idea. This show is for nerds and geeks, by nerds and geeks. And we want to share everything with you and keep you informed. And uh, we're going to start off by doing that right here. We, uh, You know, if you've been out and about, maybe you've been in a park or down at the university in the last few years and you've seen uh, your favorite uh, anime or video game characters hanging out, superheroes, other pop culture icons, you're not having a hallucination. You're probably walking in the middle of a cosplay photo shoot. They go on here all the time in Edmonton. Uh, they're quite popular and you can see them out. And we went and visited one um, just this last week and talked to some of the people and, and we talked to, uh, well, here's a clip we got here from Ryan, who's the organizer, is gonna tell us a little bit more about cosplay photo shoots. Hey everybody, it's Ron with The Watch and we are at the Enterprise Square Atrium in downtown Edmonton today. I'm talking with Ryan here, uh, also known as Spider-Man 2099. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. So what do we got going on today? Great outfit, by the way, here. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, right now, we're just doing a cosplay photo shoot for Distance of Edmonton. Awesome, awesome. So this is really great, you got some photographers and stuff. How do you, what outlets do you use to set something like this up? Uh, mostly Facebook, interaction between people at the expos, uh, cosplay groups, mostly. Very good, yeah, it's a good community for that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So, uh, lastly, before we uh, swing off into action here, uh, what made you want to set this up today? Why, why is everybody out? Uh, mostly the Edmonton Expo is coming up, so we want to get some great shots for people so they can post for their, their Instagram, their social medias, and just so people can have, have fun, have a good time, cosplay. Yeah, and that's what it's awesome. all about, right? Having fun while you're cosplaying. Having fun, that's, that's the main thing. Well, Spidey, thank you very much for taking a couple that's seconds uh, to talk to us. I know you got to swing back into action, so we'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by. All right, see you later. And we're back. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's Ryan. Such a um, great costume. I love that costume. Know, Spider -Man Every Spider-Man is so good. <laughs> um, another great thing that you know you kind of need to include in a cosplay photo shoot is generally the photographers. The photo and, aspect. And yeah, yeah, you know the guy taking the photos. The reason that you're showing up to get photos is the sketch artists the never do well down there. Um, the there's there's many types. There's many you know people you can talk to. Uh, we actually got one. His name is Billy Wong, and we'll cut to him right away. Hey, I'm Kyle, and this is Billy Wong, photographer. Hi, uh, so what are we uh, doing here today? Hey Kyle, we're just taking some uh, just casual cosplay photos. You know, it's a Sunday, lazy Sunday, might as well make something of it. What brings you to the event? Well, I like taking photos, and people who cosplay like cosplay, so it's a nice solution of our usual interests. And um, what do you get out of it as a photographer, if anything? As a photographer, I get the satisfaction that um, all these cosplayers they spend so much kind of time and effort and money kind of putting together um, their costumes for their hobby. And I myself, I actually really get a sense of satisfaction in kind of taking photos and kind of representing some of their hard work. Because sometimes 
um, certain demographics of chess players who may be very underappreciated, but I consider everyone could put a lot of effort into their hobby, so might as well really make the best of what they're doing. Awesome, that's wicked. I, I appreciate that you do that. Thank you very much, Billy. I love Billy Wong so much. He's yeah. such a good photographer. He's such a great laid back guy and how he loves to just do it for fun and for like to help the people out. Which is oh really yeah. Cool. Such first a time, that's actually the first time I've ever met him. Really? really? Yeah. So I've seen him around by top conventions like, and stuff, like, which is cool. What he said to me, I was like, damn, like that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. He's got a great attitude and he does some great work. Photographers, check. But unless you want to be a guy with a camera out in the middle of a field taking pictures of a skyline, you're going to need some cosplayers. And luckily enough, we, we got, got one. one. Yes. So, Kat, so, you were down there. We and, three, but and you were, well, yeah, really. But technically, I'm the only one in costume today here, buddy. That's sure. right. <laughs> Kat, yeah, Kat was down there taking part of the uh, in the in the cosplay photo shoot, and you yeah. got to talk to some of your cosplay buddies, didn't you? Yeah. So um, we're lucky in that the city that we live in, there's a huge community here, and we actually have quite an eclectic group of people. However, for this photo shoot, there were a few. Special. Kind of like a little like mirror yeah, they, they freaky kinda, thing going little, on there, on there. A little yeah. bit, yeah. It kind of pertained more to you specifically. I don't know how you pulled that off. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think I just have connections or something. Anyways. Deja vu. Hey, let's just talk to some of those cosplayers right now. Cool. Hi, my name's Kat and I'm here with The Watch. And we're also here with the lovely Karina. Dressed as Lise from Final Fantasy XIV Starblood. And what a beautiful costume it is. Showed up a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit about your character. Um, so the character, she is the leader of the resistance, who is going off to fight against an evil empire to liberate her homeland. Ooh, that sounds interesting. How about you tell me a bit about your costume? How long did you make? So, I took about the course of two weeks to make the whole thing. Um, so about, I'd say, 20 to 50 hours total. Oof. Man, what, what kind of techniques did you use for this? Um, well, all of my armor is made out of crackle. Okay. So that's the best way to how to make armor. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of sewing. I'm more of a seamstress than an armor maker, so I just did a lot of sewing. So I drafted all the patterns myself and put them together. This is awesome. And yeah, basically it. <laughs> well, it looks fantastic. Thank you. Well, I don't know what you think. This is awkward. Hi, Noctis. Hey, Noctis. How's it going, Noctis? Good, Noctis. How are you, Noctis? Wonderful. <laughs> Great. All right. For those that don't know, could you please tell us a little bit about your costume? Uh, well, my name is Victoria, and I am cosplaying as Noctis Mrs. Kalim from Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, with my engine blade. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about your costume. Like, what went into it? Um, well, I ended up making the shirt on its own, uh, dyed it, and then stamped all the skulls on it. I made all of the engine blade by foam, and, um, yeah, I made the glove, and it ended up being, you know, very challenging, but it was good. Good stuff. Hmm. So, about 20 hours went into the class, I want to say. So, that's not bad. It's like, yes. I really, really think What? <laughs> I Assassin's Creed Unity, made by, uh, it's a video game made by Ubisoft Canada. Very cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about your costume then. This costume was uh, bought online. I, I had some uh, detailing like uh, puff painting, um, weathering, got myself a better pant so it looks kind of nice and form fitting. Everything, um, I did some adjustment to it. When I, when I bought this, it didn't look like this. It was kind of, some areas was kind of big, it didn't look great. So I I did some sewing work to make sure like it fits really nice on me. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you don't want just the costume to look good. Um, it's all but also you want to show off your physique naturally. So very true. Very it looks fantastic, man. Love the detail that you added. Thank you. Hey, Prompto. Hey, what's up? 
Or Marshall, something you might do. Oh, you know. You know? Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, people who don't know, please introduce yourself to the camera. Hi, I'm Aisha. I'm cosplaying Prompto Argento from Final Fantasy XV. Best boy. This nerd's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me a little bit about your costume there, Aisha. Um, so this is like the fourth incarnation of my Prompto costume. I've had different pants, I've had a different shirt, I've had a different wig. Uh, a lot of it's been tweaked multiple times. These pants are actually um, hand-painted. I got them from Value Village in the boys section. The little boys section. Yeah, so, so I hand painted the pants, I hand painted the shirt, um, the vest, I stitched all these on. Some of them are homemade on a zigzag stitch on my basic machine, including these. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then I made this guy. Uh, it's completely made out of foam. Yeah, I can like, get a little closer. Completely made out of pink foam, carved, painted. And if you look closer, it's actually signed by Ray Chase and Robbie Davis. The voice so, actors were yeah, also Yeah, so that's pretty cool, so I guess, 15-ish hours altogether. Only 15. Roughly. Are you kidding? <laughs> Give or take. This anyway. I mean, I did buy a lot of the pictures. Oh, whatever. Not as much homemade yeah. as usual. Whatever. Well, I think that's all the time we have for you today. Um, I'm going to sign up now. All right. Catch you later. Let's go. Let's nice. go. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so exactly, uh, what was that maneuver at the end? What do you call that one? No, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, that was supposed to be we a call that a blooper. No. We call that a blooper. That's oh. that's definitely. Uh, she bit the dust. I made my day of that. Yeah, you wanted to this. shoot that again. I was yes, like, no. I did. No, yes, I did. Yes, I did. We wouldn't let her. We kept that. Like, no, it's no. Dick. I could have been a chocobo. So voice. that's kind of basically the three elements in a photo shoot. You've got your <coughs> guy that organized it yeah. through whatever medium out there. It's mainly the Facebook, Facebook pages. pages. There's different Facebook pages, and we're gonna um, we're gonna put something up on the afterwards. yeah in the in the in the down below area. If you uh, check that out, you'll be able to click on uh, quite a few of these people's pages and uh, their links, and be able to find them and follow them and check out a lot of their other cosplays, their other uh, photography stuff that they've taken, their their edited versions. Uh, you can actually see one of Cat all done up where it, from far away, looks like Batman, but I don't know why. Anyways, Wait, what? Yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, yeah and, they, and we're gonna, shoot. you can contact them if you want to get involved and check things out. They're always going on, right? They're always welcome. Yeah. The community's great for new people coming in and that. Exactly. And it's really cool. Or you yeah. could take the initiative and make one yourself. There's Ooh. no set rules on any of There's these things. There's an idea. No, yeah. it really isn't. We told you what you need. You just got to do that. Speaking of rules. Out. Oh, yes. Edmonton Expo is coming. <laughs> so Edmonton Expo is a... A Comic Con? Yeah. yeah. A Edmonton, local Edmonton one. Expo's a Comic Con. Yeah. That's our local one. Yeah. And it's uh, about a week away here now, and uh, they just recently released uh, new rules for this year's uh, Expo. As they do every year. As they do oh, every yes. year. And, uh, thing. and they, well, and every year, just like this year and like every year, the community was up in arms about some of the rules that were going on. Uh, in particular, the footwear rule. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you to explain more about what that was exactly. There's a bunch of new rules. We're not going to tell you all of them tonight, but yeah. so, okay. be okay. aware there's new rules. So the new rules are basically listed as costume and props yeah. rules, but there's, you know, there's more to it, but we'll yeah. let's... We're going to talk about the footwear rule because that was the big one footwear. that everyone was all up in arms about yeah. because of how, well, really vague it was. And it was. Yeah. Cat, take um, it away. So basically... Edmonton Expo released uh, 10 things you need to know before you go to the Edmonton Expo. One of the rules on there described footwear that you're allowed to have, and it said you could not have anything that was over an inch tall. Now, there, that is incredibly vague, because most shoes that you wear nowadays are in fact an inch tall. Yeah, mine are that I'm wearing right now are more than an inch tall in the heel, like the sole or whatever. Like. Yeah, and it, it was to do if it elevates your toes more than an inch, not your heel itself. So you could wear like five inch stilettos and you'd be fine. But God forbid your well, your yeah. toes are one inch off the ground and you're causing a problem, apparently. Beyond foot problems and back problems. Yeah, yeah beyond that. Yeah. Um, so then there was a subsequent release where the expo said <laughs> that... Um, so there would be some exceptions, like pre-made shoes would be okay, but they still barred uh, some things, like Japanese sandals, I believe. Yeah, the yeah, traditional the, what, ones. The now. traditional ones, Gators. like geishas use. Gators? 
Something Geisha. like that, yeah. Geishas. No, no, no. God, they're called Gatas. Is that what they're the called? The shoe's called a Gata. Oh, okay. G-A-T-A, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. The but, thing the Samurai Jack wears. Yeah. Yes, that. There we go. Um, Bring it into perspective for everyone out there. Still an issue, though, because um, they released these re these rules two weeks before the expo. And that's the big thing that everyone's always complaining about is how quick, because it's you, you, you don't have any time to do anything about it exactly. once they do that, right? Now. Exactly. And, like, the hardcore cosplayers usually start their build the, a year before. The day after expo ends? The day after know? the expo is They're like, okay, I know what, exactly I know what, what I want to make for right. next year. Yeah. And there is, I mean, really, like, in this community, there is some, like, you know, there, you know, you got your Supermans, you got your Batmans, but there's some crazy cosplays that guys do where they, you know, they do spend a year building them and they're on stilts. We've got guys like Juan that does, like, all the big characters that are, like, yeah, uh, the massive Big Hero guy. 6 and, and Ben. Taylor and, uh, Nordic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, guys like that that have these great, big, elaborate costumes on stilts and stuff that are just absolutely beautiful. And basically what those rules said was, you're not welcome. Yeah. And two weeks... Prior to an expo, you can't really vocalize your, or you can't really protest in terms of monetary sales because you can't refund. It's past that point. Yeah. So then the expo released another statement basically saying they've dismissed that rule for this year. Um, and they're going to actually look into input from the cosplay community itself. Which so, is which is really what they should do from the start because yeah. they're that, that, those are the people that, you know, really have the insight as to what's going on, and right? No. And I mean, that's the thing too, is that like every cosplayer I know that does the costumes with the big stilts, they can walk on stilts, right? They're yeah. not just like, hey, I'm going to try this out today and go yeah, down to the expo exactly. and walk around for six hours Matt in a crowd Nightingale. of people, right? Matt Nightingale can walk on no. stilts. He's a stilt walker. You know, but, so I mean, and but it was really good though that, because uh, they changed it, right? Well, yeah. okay. So basically what happened was, and th this happens every time. I mean, we, we can't get upset that they put out a new rule. It's a new rule. They put it out there. And the community complained in, you know, whatever. Some of them were just whining babies that just wanted to be heard. But there's actually a lot of constructive uh, criticism to this that said, like, you know, like, look, like, my regular work boot is two inches tall. Like, like yeah. what's going on here? And, you know, the expo staff took a second and was like, you know what? We should listen to this. Like, they do every time. But there's a new rule. They implement it, sort of. And just by floating it out there and seeing what the community does, we've reacted. And if we don't react, whether I, I realize that we're going to, you know, have the whiners, we're going to have the, the people that just don't even have any actual constructive criticism whatsoever. They just complain to complain. But then we've also got the actual people that put real thought and info and background knowledge behind it and go, look, like this is, this is arbitrary. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it shouldn't even be a thought. No. So these people get involved and I, I really appreciate that Expo took the time not only to listen to all the whiners and the complainers and yeah. deal with all the backlash then they got a lot and of the that, hate yeah. and people telling them that they're going to return their tickets but they couldn't return their tickets. It, it was it was horrible. Yeah. That, that part, I, you know, like, I've got to give them credit for actually even yeah. taking the time to listen to yeah. us. Well, yeah. I think that what happens, I think some like some more calm level headed it did. heads got in it there did. to it send really in did. some letters that were it actually, really you know, with it, good points and stuff. That's instead basically of just being what angry. ended up happening. And Expo within three, three business days, yeah. I'll call it three business right days. Right away they turned it. They, yeah. they revamped the rules and they said, look, we're just going to scrap it. Um, but we do have a couple people that we are going to be consulting with in the cosplay community. Uh, two of those people are named publicly. Um, the other person. So yeah, we don't need to get into know, that. Whatever. Yeah. But you can look that all but up. You can look that up. You know, and it's it's great because we, you know, it did prove that we can get change happening as long as, like I said, cooler heads prevail. Don't don't just jump down their don't. throats. Yeah. They're 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 doing a job, and most of them are volunteers. And the other thing too is, is what do we get? Seventy thousand people at Expo, like. Uh, at Edmonton Expo, I think it's about 70,000. Yeah, I think they claimed like 91 year almost. Well, that, that's, yeah, well, that's it's that's Cal Calgary's is, through the roof, though. There's, well, there's a lot of people in one really small place. It's like bigger yes. than the, you know, the population of Red Deer, you know, for now, three days. See, so we got to have some rules. The problem right? I have with the rule that was implemented and like whatever is it, it's a cosplay and costumes and props check. Now, if you're wearing regular clothing. Hold on, pause. Which one are you now talking about? The, the, Which the rule? Same rule. Same rule. Same rule same about rule. the footwear. Same rule okay. about the footwear. Uh, but I'm bringing up the fact that it's all the rules inside the cosplay costume compliance check, whatever you want to call it. Um, is as a regular patron, um, I've gone to an animathon. Let's call it. You know, I've been to those. I've been going for a long time. 
and it's a Japanese style type of convention. So I wore samurai pants. I wore a lot. I actually wore this shirt and I wore a samurai hat. Um, if I had shown up to the Edmonton Expo with my samurai shoes on, I'm not a cosplayer, but these rules would have basically kicked me out. Mm -hmm. And that being said, it's like, e even though you're not a cosplayer or the, you think these rules don't apply to you, you got to go check them out because they might, they, you might not be allowed to wear your regular outfit. Yeah. You know, and that's a good point too, is that if you're not, you know, a cosplayer, if you're just going to attend, visit the site, take a look at what the rules always are. Always look at the rules. They always have a thing of like, you know, survival tips and stuff like that. If you haven't been before, because as I said, it's a lot of people in a small survival area tips. for over three, <laughs> three days. Right. So it can get yeah. pretty crazy. We'll do survival tips next episode. Yeah. I think oh, that's geez. a good one. We're going to bring that up next week. Survival tips. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bring your, when you're, bring your uh, hand sanitizer and water. Oh Wrong. geez. I hate hand sanitizers. At, at, at expos, there's a lot of things to collect, right? Oh God. I love collecting. Have you guys heard of force Friday? What the what? heck is a Force Friday? Come on. Force Friday. Every year, uh, they, they release all the new Star Wars toys on a Friday in, in September. And, well, if you're like me, you're, you're down at uh, the Toys R Us on, on midnight there. That's... that's well, this just magically noise. appeared at the Magic Box. What is that? So anyways, yeah. So every year, they release the new toys. I'm, I'm a big, big Star Wars nut. So, of course, I was outside of Toys R Us at midnight on the Thursday before oh Force God. Friday. Wow, what a to, nerd. Uh, yeah, to I check out the new toys. We're nuts. Uh, great time down there at Toys R Us. They had some guys from uh, Echo Base Temple with Saber Guild out doing some lightsaber demonstrations in the parking lot. And then, of course, at midnight, we all rushed in. And uh, I went specifically looking for this item, and I was lucky enough to find it. Uh, it's uh, an electronic helmet from the Black Series. It's Poe Dameron's helmet from The Force Awakens. Uh, I was so excited to get this. Now I gotta, I'm gonna open it up here because I've been. You haven't opened this yet? No, I've been Wait, losing what? my mind for like a week waiting for this. <laughs> Wait, a, what? What kind of collector you are you? A week. To do this? I'm the kind of collector that has other things going on. Oh, uh, so I wouldn't have been able to wait a week. And, Holy geez. shit! Trying I get something in the mail up. and it's like Christmas. Oh yeah, that's know, a different right? story. But I knew I wanted to share this with you guys when I got it. And it's okay. I bought some other action figures and some Lego that night. So I've been busy. It's okay. So you're a huge Star Wars nerd. I am a really big Star Wars fan. I'm... I, I couldn't tell. What's this? Well, I'm, I'm kind of in that age demographic. I went and saw the first movie as a child when I was seven in the movie theaters. And, and it's pretty much changed my life since then. Okay, so... I pull this thing on. I'm excited. Like, <laughs> like Jesus Christ. I'm excited Stop too. Talking. That's why I take the time. <laughs> Stop talking. It just tosses the box, doesn't even care. No, <laughs> it's a, a box. box. Yeah, I guess, right? It's a box. So anyways, Jeez. here it is. Oh, I've, oh my oh, god. It's pretty. Oh, nice, eh? Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it has dude. battle damage yeah. on it. It's oh, very cool. Shit. Can, I Can you check that out? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, hey, that's... So that's got, really so I've actually... It's cool. got nice lining inside. I did some oh, research shit. before and found out that the ear muffs come out for adults so that it'll actually fit on your head. Wait. And uh, I gotta turn it on here. It's just Leia now. <laughs> it's got a visor. It goes up and down. No. Oh. No Red more. 5, standing by. I really, really love oh this collectible. God. It fits great. It looks great. Um, I made it out with my brother. I, it's on the shelf next to some of my other helmets. <laughs> and uh, I'm not Luke Skywalker. <laughs> um, one of the other features, I don't know if you hear it, but it's got surround sound inside the helmet here. So when you uh, turn it on, the the you can find the switch. Stop. Oh, does it light up? Does it do no, things? but there's a switch here for does power it, that it you can't find. It does more than just find look, the power for look nice. Use the force. <laughs> this, yeah. is a, this is a smooth segment right here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Real smooth. So, to do. so anyways, yeah. So visor down. Oh, shit. You can, you you can hit the sword. sound effects. Can you guys hear that? Yo. It's like making... I don't know if you can hear it, but it's all inside here. I'm I'm <laughs> piloting the next wing right now. Well, and love it. I want some of his drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, share. Anyways, I think that's all for us this week from the watch. God. Yeah, you're going home to play with that, aren't you? Oh, you oh, betcha. I'm riding. I'm, I'm driving home with this on my head. That's for sure. <laughs> I really hope you don't get pulled over. Uh, me too. Oh, shit. That's freaking awesome. That's all for this week. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us on our first episode. We got more in the weeks to come. Uh, we're going to have some next week as we, uh, I got to turn this as off. As we get ready for Expo, we're going to have another deal. Can you turn that off? Yes, yeah, so next week, you tune in. Uh, we'll be talking about um, Con Survival. So, yeah. Um, Sounds fun. 
And uh, we might actually have a, a giveaway for you next week. Uh, That's right. So definitely tune in next week. Yeah, stay tuned. In the coming weeks, we got so much fun stuff coming up for you guys. We're going to be going to Expo next weekend. We're going to be reporting right before the Expo. We got giveaways coming up. We're going to have contests. And we want to hear from you most of all. So please make those comments down below. Let us know what you thought of the show. Let us know what you want to see on future episodes. And we'll be sure to do our best to cover that for you. Yeah, like, also, comment, subscribe, whatever, down below. Yeah, comment, subscribe, like the page, share the page, wake your grandma up in the middle of the night, tell her what Don't you found. Don't do that. Ron, what, what's your favorite uh, favorite movie franchise? Um, uh, let me think about that. Uh, I guess Star Wars? Oh, what's your favorite video game? I don't know. Final Fantasy 15? All right, and uh, what's, your I guess favorite, what's your favorite clothing brand? Uh, well, I mean, filthy casual, but I'll shout out to uh, Bushcraft Heroes. They're an up-and-coming Facebook group that uh, builds stuff in the woods. Definitely check them out. Hey, Very cool. cool. Very cool. Remember, I'm Ron. I'm Kyle. I'm Kat. <laughs> that's Kat. Uh. And this is The Watch. We'll see you next week. Thanks you very much. Bye.